let's be real. Building an app is never just about code, especially when you're solo. It's about knowing what to build, what to skip, and what actually matters. And now that we've got tools like Cursor and GPT in the mix, it's not just about how fast you can build, it's about building with intention, because these tools are powerful, but only if you know how to guide them. That's why I've built this little routine I go through before I touch Xcode or Cursor, and it's honestly made everything smoother for me. It helps me avoid building stuff I'll regret halfway through, give my AI tools real, clear context and actually feel confident in what I'm trying to make before I even write a line of Swift UI. It's part voice note, part strategy session, part design sketch. Kind of messy, but it works. And to be real, I didn't always do it this way. I used to just open Xcode and dive right in. No planning, no prep, just vibes. But looking back, the projects I felt most stuck on were the ones I didn't take time to think through first. So now, I slow down at the beginning, not to waste time, but to save it later. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through my full pre-code setup. Quick intro, I'm Daniel, and this channel is called Solo Swift Crafter. I share how I build iOS apps solo with Swift UI, Cursor, Claude, and a mix of AI tools. If that sounds like your vibe, you're in the right place. All right, so the app I'm working on right now is the Time Tracker. Nothing fancy, but that's why it's a good example. You've probably used one. You've definitely seen one. You know the vibe. The first thing I do when I've got an app idea is I don't open Xcode. I don't open Figma. I just talk. Usually it's while I'm doing something else, walking, laundry, whatever. I'll pop open voice GPT, no instructions, and just brain dump the idea like I'm explaining it to a friend. I'll go, okay, I'm imagining this app where you can start focus sessions, maybe Pomodoro style, but also customizable, like maybe different workflows for deep work, studying, whatever. What do you think? And I'll mention early on that I'm using the SLC approach, not MVP. So I'm not interested in shipping something half-baked. I want the first version to feel simple, lovable, and complete. And GPT will often push back in good ways. Like, uh, what happens if the user closes the app mid-session? Or what kind of feedback do they get when a session ends? Once I've talked it out, I'll ask uh, GPT for a recap just something short and clean. And then I'll say, okay, based on everything I said, what do you think I'm missing? Um, usually there's one or two things I didn't think about, sometimes more. I take what makes sense, skip what doesn't, and then ask GPT to help me write a little instruction, like a personality guide for the project. Here's what I ended up with for this one. Act as a senior Swift UI developer and product lead partnering with me to shape and refine a productivity app for iOS 18 using the simple, lovable, complete SLC approach. The app centers around helping people manage their time better with Pomodoro style sessions and user created flexible workflows. Now I've got a project folder inside ChatGPT and every convo inside that folder shares the same context, so I'm not re-explaining myself every time. After that, I usually kick off a new canvas to define the app requirements and align on the UX, and then it's time for the PMR, product market requirements. This is like the blueprint, and I'll be honest, I didn't always write these out. I used to keep it all in my head. But the moment you start working with AI tools, or even just trying to stay focused solo, it becomes way more helpful to have it written down. It's like your compass. I usually divide the app into three parts and just start with one. For this time tracker, that first big piece is create a sessions tab that allows users to easily launch or build focused time management workflows. And the goal, the goal is to provide a frictionless experience with delightful visuals and persistent access to active sessions. I'll go back and forth here, ask a bunch of questions, 
what's the best app structure? How should the data model work? What's the behavior when a session is interrupted? That kind of thing. At the same time, I've usually got Figma open. I start sketching the layout just for myself, rough and fast. I'm not worried about polish yet, just flow and feel. And honestly, this part always feels kind of playful. It's like giving myself permission to explore before I lock into anything. I think that's easy to skip when you're trying to move fast. But for me, it's where the personality of the app starts to show up. Once I'm happy with how things look and feel, I drop the PMR and the sketches into Notion. I use it like a dev log, just keeping track of what I've figured out. And it's kind of funny. This used to feel like extra work, but now it feels like a relief. Like I'm not carrying the whole app in my head anymore. I can come back a week later and still know where I left off. And then with my design in place and my PMR written, I'm almost ready to open cursors, but before I do, there's one last step, setting up the cursor rule. This is the thing that tells cursor, here's what I'm building, and here's how I want you to help. I use a template I shared in a past video, I'll drop it in the description again. I open a new conversation in GPT just for this step. I say something like, uh, help me create a cursor rule for step one of my time tracker app. And then it's a back and forth. We go line by line. I'll say, um, hmm, this line feels a bit vague. Can we tighten it? Or let's add that I'm using core data and want to avoid over-engineering. As we're shaping it, I'm kind of mentally checking off a few boxes. Does this reflect the PMR? Does it support the UX vibe I'm going for? Yeah. Is it aligned with my stack? Swift UI, core data, possibly CloudKit? Does it feel like my app, not just generic code? And are we keeping it scoped and SLC, not turning it into a feature soup? Once that all clicks, I paste the rule into cursor, and then I'm ready to build. Before I started doing this, my prompts and cursor felt hit or miss. Sometimes it helped, sometimes it went way off. But now that I've got a rule that actually reflects the app's vision, the responses feel way more aligned. It's like working with a teammate who actually gets it. Now, every time I ask for help in Cursor, it's not just answering a question. It's helping me build something we've already aligned on. And I think that's been the biggest shift for me. I'm not using AI to generate ideas. I'm using it to sharpen and execute the ones I've already thought through. It's still my build. I'm just not building alone. So yeah, that's how I get set up before I write a single line of Swift. It might sound like a lot up front, but it actually saves me time. Fewer rewrites, better decisions, less code I have to undo later. And honestly, it just feels better because I'm not rushing. I'm building something I actually believe in. If you're working solo or trying to figure out how to use AI tools without losing your vision, I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments how you prep before coding, or if you want a deep dive into how I structure my PMRs or cursor rules, or if you'd rather chat one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I always like hearing how other solo devs are working. And next time, I'll show you how I take all this planning and actually start building out the first screen in cursor. So if you're curious what this looks like in practice, stick around. And hey, if this helped, maybe drop a like or hit subscribe. I've got a full video coming up where I'll walk you through exactly how I use Cursor AI once all this prep work is in place. Like, not just asking it to build a screen, but how I feed it the PMR, the cursor rule, the design sketches, and how that shapes the way it responds. I'll show you how I go from strategy and structure to actual Swift UI code step-by-step step inside Cursor. So if you've ever wondered how to go from a plan to a real build, that one's going to be for you. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.